the plan for today is to start putting on the actual siding. Well, well, not the siding itself, but if you noticed in the background of one of the last shots, we had a delivery show up, and it was all the J-trim for part of our siding. So we're gonna start installing that around the windows and doors today. So I was sitting here racking my brain trying to figure out how to go about doing this video without it coming across as just extremely boring. I mean at the end of the day I'm going to be installing about 1200 square feet of siding and there's only so many nails you can see being hammered in without, well, getting bored. So this video is going to be a little bit different than some of others, but kind of the same. There'll be a little bit more voiceover, but I'm still going to go over a few tips and tricks for installing vinyl siding. If it's not something that's going to be on your plate, or something you're just simply not interested in, we'll see you guys next week. I totally understand. The first step is going to be to install another form of water protection with a drip edge above our trim work. So if you remember in our past video when we installed our windows with a nailing fin, we did tape everything and set our Tyvek up in such a way to prevent water from entering the structure. But like anything, it's nice to have a little bit of redundancy and that's exactly what this drip edge above all of the trim work is meant to do. With the drip ledges in place, we can move on to the J-channel. This is the first step in the siding installation process. You can think of J-channel like trim for your vinyl siding. It's what covers all those cut edges and gives everything a nice finished look. So for this project, I'm going to be installing J-channel pretty well anywhere where I installed PVC trim. So this means at my corner edges, around my windows, around my doors, or you can think of it anywhere you're going to have vinyl siding ending, you're going to need J-channel. Now the crappy thing about J-Channel, it is probably the most time-consuming part of installing vinyl siding. It will take the longest to make all your cuts, make all your miters nice and clean at your corners, and just have everything set up and ready to go to put that first piece of vinyl siding in place. Now this probably goes without saying, but make sure your J-Channel is level and plumb. So those horizontal and those vertical pieces, make sure they are level and plumb respectively because it'll make the rest of the project go that much smoother and your installation look that much more professional once it is complete. So our siding has finally come in for the rest of this garage. Uh, like I said, we had the J trim already, but we've been waiting on the actual siding for almost six weeks, which means we can get this garage pretty close to finished up on the outside. And then Fingers crossed our garage doors come in next week and that'll wrap up the actual build portion of this project. Love is love. Love is love. I need no. Finally, we're starting to get some siding up on this garage, and that brings me to tip number two. How to go about cutting your vinyl siding. The best way I have found to do it is using a vinyl flooring cutter. It cuts a clean, straight, perfect line every single time, and it's fast. The best part, though, is it saves your hands from having to use tin snips or something like that and making every single cut by hand. Seems okay. Whew. Definitely a little dirty. Back to work. So 
I honestly think the slowest part of installing vinyl siding is going around with all the J channel around the windows, the doors, everything like that, all the prep work. But we just cruised through the back wall of this garage. It took us about an afternoon, uh, maybe a little bit longer to do it. All that's left here is to go up into the peak up there. We can't do that yet. Uh, I'll get into that a little bit later on. For now though, we're gonna move around to the side of the garage. We're gonna get our J channel installed there and we're gonna continue with the uh, blackboard and batten. One of the primary differences with running vertical board and batten siding like we are here, compared to say traditional horizontal siding, is we also need to add a piece of J-channel to the bottom. This not only gives the bottom a nice clean finished look, but it also stops any insects or wasps or whatever from flying up behind the siding and making a home in there. However, because I'm adding essentially a giant bowl to the bottom of the wall, I need to drill holes in the bottom of this J-channel to make sure any water that accumulates in there has a place to drain out. So the final tip I have, make sure you leave a little bit of space behind the head of those nails when you're hammering them in. You want to leave room for the siding as well as the J-channel to be able to expand and contract with different temperatures. Well if you made it this far, thanks for sticking it around. I really do appreciate all of your support. Hopefully at the very least you had 7 minutes of something somewhat entertaining. Thanks a ton for watching guys, make sure to smash that subscribe button and click that little bell icon if you guys haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one.